Bora da, a chryso cynnas i chi un hafoliad ordre newydd y bora yma. Good morning and a very warm welcome to our worship this morning. Well, we're in lockdown again, sadly. However, the pandemic, the virus, will not stop us worshiping together and being together in the spirit of the Lord. With you, let us pray. Father God, we bring to you in our service this morning, the needs of the world, of our country, of our community, of a vaccine. Pray, Father God, for that miracle to happen soon and pray for all who are involved with the pandemic, caring for others, those who are ill, those who are lonely and isolated, those who are fearful. Father God, be among us as we worship you and as we bring to you our prayers. Amen. The theme of our service today will be love and the commandment of our Lord that we are to love one another. We begin with the beautiful hymn, Love Divine. Reading for us this morning from All Saints Church is Christina Connell. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. 
You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, Oh, the son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer. Not from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the word of the Lord. Dear Christina, thank you. During our Bible study this last week, Christina read this very same passage from the Gospel of Matthew, and knowing that I had a sermon to prepare for this virtual service, she commented, There, your sermon written and ready for you. She was, of course, referring to the words of Jesus. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. A second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Yes, these words of Jesus are indeed a sermon in itself. But although we know and understand these two commandments and their immense importance, do we actually live them? Let's see what's happening with Jesus in our reading today. Well, Jesus is yet again being confronted by the religious authorities. It's common for us to divide the characters into good and bad camps. Jesus and his disciples are the goodies, the temple leadership and the Pharisees the baddies. But this is a little unfair and simplistic. The religious leaders certainly have an agenda. They are not only trying to trap Jesus, but they are also trying to understand where he is coming from. They are trying to be faithful to their tradition and faith. And this means that they look to the law of Moses, the Ten Commandments in the main, to provide guidance and direction. To them, Jesus seems to be disregarding the law. He seems to be attacking the very foundations of their society, and this is very disturbing. Jesus, in responding to the trap set by his opponents, attempts to open their hearts to see that there is another way of understanding and interpreting the law and the traditions. Jesus is saying to them, that instead of seeing the law as a rigid set of rules, perhaps there is another way of looking at it. That, at its core, the gift of the law is about love. God's involvement with God's people has always been love and continues to be about love. Irish writer and radical theologian Peter Rollins tells a story about a minister. It is Sunday evening and she is sitting in her home reading a book. One of her parishioners knocks on the door. She opens the door and finds her parishioner in tears. He is a big sturdy man, reduced to tears, and he pleads. There is a family living down the road. The husband has lost his job. She is looking after three children. Their mother stays with them. But they don't have enough money for their rent. They have no money at the moment, and they are going to be kicked out of their home. Even if they are one day late on their rent, they are just going to get kicked out on the street. It's the middle of winter. 
We've got to do something. Please, let's do something. The minister is moved and says, Yes, we will go and we will get some money. Just in passing, she says, How, how do you know this family? He replied, I'm their landlord. Faith and life have to be held together, not separately. Sadly for this landlord, faith and life are divorced. In his faith life, he is concerned for this needy family and is desperate to do something to help. But in his professional and social life, it is business as usual. If you can't pay the rent, out you go. Those are the rules. And so this man is living a divided life. His faith and his life are divided. They don't intersect. Although he tries and possibly really wants to be a true disciple of Jesus, he fails to live out his faith. Truth be told, this landlord is no different to many of us. In fact, he is braver than I am because at least he is willing to admit his place in the broken system. His livelihood, the food he puts on his family's table, depends on people paying the rent on time. And so he is stuck. We all are. Stuck in self-interest. Stuck in self-preservation. How do I live out my faith and care for my neighbour when my life is on the line too? Like those who encountered Jesus in the Gospel stories, most of us often struggle in our effort to live our lives faithfully. And as we struggle, Jesus speaks to us today with these words. Love God. Love your neighbour as yourself. These words are a call to action. As we reach out to others in love, this reflects our love for God. The work of love involves serving others. It includes respecting everyone. It includes seeing and defending the human rights of others. It involves caring for and giving ourselves to others. And it always involves cost and sacrifice. In the Gospel of John, Jesus says, A new commandment I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Let us put these two important commandments to work. To love God and to love our neighbours as ourselves. To love others as Jesus has loved us, whatever the cost, whatever the sacrifice. For remember, we are God's church. We are God's ambassadors in our communities. We are to be ready and willing to carry out his work. Let us, as a church, follow the example of Jesus in our service to others and in loving all, especially those with the greatest needs. I'll resist from saying a final Amen until after this next song, which will continue the theme of the sermon in its words and images. This is what I want the world to see Who it is 
from the churches. Well, we've got some wonderful news. Happy news to begin with. We've been praying for both Trifina and Becky, who were expecting child. Well, we have two new baby boys in the world. So we give thanks to the Lord for bringing um, Morgan James Williams safely into this world and Theodore. So we pray for Trifina and Graham and their new baby boy, Morgan James and we also pray for Mary, our organist grandmother. We also pray for Theodore, who was born to Becky, and we pray for both Becky and Rob, and for big brother and sister, Rosie and Arthur, and for Jean Bailey and Alan, um, granddad and grandma. We have a birthday to celebrate. Peter Thompson is celebrating his birthday. He didn't disclose how old he was, but happy birthday to you, Peter. And Shirley uh, Crowther was celebrating her 85th birthday last Wednesday. And so congratulations to you, Shirley. We have been asked to pray for Emily, who lives in Florida with her husband, Gareth. Gareth being the son of Di and Kay Davis. Kay worships with us at All Saints with her grandson. And so we pray for Emily, who in her early 50s has Alzheimer's, and pray for Gareth as he cares for her with love and with commitment. Pray that the necessary support and help will be there 
for Gareth. We pray for Di and Kay, who are very anxious and worried. Pray for Jane Deus Hinge. A message has arrived from Jane to say, better news than she was last sharing with us. A consultant has taken the trouble to read her notes more carefully and believes that he may be able to give her treatment to help um, in some way. So we pray for that treatment to be successful. Continue to pray for Marion Cash, who is to have procedure in hospital this week. And of course, we continue to pray for little Carlos, for young Evie, and for baby Ronnie, for their families. Pray for Jean Humphreys, expecting treatment in hospital soon, and for her brother Jeff, who is ill. Pray for Millie Cherry, for Caroline Davis, and pray for Arwin and Nesta. We also remember in our prayers Kaylee, young Kaylee who died suddenly and unexpectedly, a pupil at Newtown High School. Pray for her parents and all members of her family, friends and the school staff and pupils. And so before Richard proceeds with the prayers, I ask for prayers for Trigonon Church at a meeting last week. The Church Council declared that they had come to the decision that they were requesting of the bishop and the diocese permission to close the church. That is very sad news for the community, uh, but alas, finances and circumstances um, prevail. No, please, all in Trigonon, that you are in my prayers, together with the prayers of the churches in the mission area. So over to Richard. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for our church communities and the community at large, and we offer our grateful thanks for all the love which you bestow upon us, for good health and daily food, for the shelter and care of our homes, for the love of family and friends which surround us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen Gregory, our bishop, your servants Archdeacon Barry, Nia and Jeanette, and all those working to maintain the churches of this mission area in the service of Christ. We give thanks for our new mission area leader, Suzanne, and ask that you bless and guide her, as well as Sue, Nikki and Kath, as they undergo their training under such difficult circumstances. Lord, we pray for all our churches, many of which are struggling to survive and give thanks that we continue to find new and inspiring ways for your church to remain open and welcoming to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and merciful Father, we come before you asking for a quick control of the coronavirus currently ravaging our world, that your spirit might inspire those researching new medicines and treatments. We entrust to you the families and communities affected, wherever they may be. May the frontline medical staff around the world know our love. We pray for the relevant governments and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people, for the safety of all frontline staff, and for those whose work has been affected, bringing financial hardship and an uncertain future. Guide us, Lord, to find the most helpful sources of information, enabling us to be well informed without becoming anxious and panicked. And give people of all ages the necessary caution to keep us from unwittingly spreading this terrible disease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit and for all who are anyway troubled at this time. Lord, we remember before you all areas of ethnic violence and racial hatred, for vic victims of intolerance and oppression, and we remember all who are suffering for their faith. We pray for those in hospital or residential care, for those who need ongoing medical treatment, 
but are forced to wait at this time, and for those especially known to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who mourn because of the death of loved ones, for those who still miss the companionship and care of those dear to them. Surround us and all who mourn this day with your compassion and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, thank you for this new day, and we ask you to give us the strength so that we are not people of fear, rather people of courage, people who protect our neighbour's safety, people of generosity, and may our love be so strong that seeing need we may never pass by on the other side. And now we say together, as God's family, the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Dear Richard, thank you. Well, this brings us to the end of our time of worship together. Please know that you continue to be in my prayers, and please know that if there's any way that we as a church can help, you only need to ask. And so we end with a prayer and a blessing and with a beautiful hymn, a new commandment I give unto you. Gwedion, let us pray. Ddiw dad diolch i ti am yr hyn yr ydyn ni wedi i rannu i gyda'n gilydd ac am ddod â ni at yn gilydd. Father God, thank you for what we have shared and for bringing us together. Pray now that you will indeed equip us for our mission that we will live our faith, that we will be faithful ambassadors and servants in our community, especially at this time of pandemic and isolation for many. Father God, we ask that you bring peace into our lives, peace into our homes and into our communities, indeed peace into the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. <laughs>